Bill is not the first step to the surveillance society. It is the surveillance society. A lot of liberal hysteria. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. And action! Also, Ed Snowden would like a word. I know they want to make it look like Senator Jason Robards overdosed before driving his car into the river, but I'm not entirely sure what meticulously spilling them all over the floor is going to do, since the pills are going to dissolve in the water anyway. Jesus Christ, this car goes under faster than any car in film history. It took like four seconds. Look at that water on the left. How is it even deep enough to swallow a car, let alone do it that close to shore? The opening credits emphasize a world where all the planet's cameras are pointing at you, spying on you. And... <laughs> I love how in this montage about surveillance state and government spying, they snuck in what is at best some dash cam footage, and at worst, an episode of Cops. Just remember, everyone, with all the presents and snow and decorations we see later in this movie, and the tree and decorations right here, Enemy of the State is a f***ing Christmas movie. Christmas movie. Oh, sh I didn't realize Lisa Bonet was in this. Sorry, boo. There's obviously nothing wrong with this scene. What's amazing is she knew back in 1998 there would be a cinema sins because... There's nothing wrong with me. Respectful scoop. I like how the only table with any overhead lighting in this place is the one the main character is sitting at right now. Christmas movie. And if that happens, that tape will disappear forever into my private collection, along with the... Zapruder film and the porno from Hitler's bunker. I know this is supposed to be a joke, but why would the Zapruder film be in your private collection? Geraldo showed that on TV in 1975, and it's been seen many times. It's not like it contains secret information. Sure, nobody noticed the aliens in the Zapruder film until 2002, but that's because film cleaning techniques had improved. Let me ask you this. Here's a mob boss who clearly controls this restaurant, and he's got a TV and VCR and five of his mob buddies all eating a meal and watching boxing, and they're using this tiny-ass prep counter as a table? I like the staging and blocking here, movie-wise, but wouldn't the mob boss rather just have some f***ing space and sit in the restaurant in a booth, or at least bring a bigger table in here? I went to Joe's in Brooklyn with Chris and Barrett and stood between six other people at a tiny-ass six-inch ledge to eat my slice, and I had more room than any of these fools do to eat. Also, seriously, what is with all the one-fourth filled wine glasses on top of that shelf behind them? Doesn't anyone at the restaurant ever finish their wine? Why are they stored up here instead of cleaned? Also, also, god damn, that is a lot of f***ing garlic. That is all the garlic in Little Italy right there. There is a f***ing garlic shortage because of this one restaurant. Jesus. Who's the brother? Jesus, how many people are just casually racist in this movie? So Jim Phelps killed a congressman and then told some underling, Hey, whenever they find that guy's car and body, you dress up like fish and game and walk around the scene of the crime in case some asshole has a duck trail cam across the river. Like, really? And this is one of the lesser huge conveniences in this movie. Homicide investigators have told me that they did find a bottle of pills in his lab. Honestly, I thought Barry Pepper poured the pills out on the floor of the car, but considering that A, they laid Jason Robards on his side, and B, they pushed the goddamn car into the river, and filling the car with water, I'm gonna guess that the pills weren't neatly lying in his lap when they found him. This experienced wildlife photographer changes the tapes on his camera, but not the batteries. Christmas movie! If you rearrange the letters in Thomas Reynolds, you get Same Old Story and H. And sadly, Same Old Story is not a town in New Hampshire, because that would have been awesome. But I spent 20 minutes rearranging letters, and I will not have nothing to show for. Jack Black, Barry Pepper, Jake Busey, Scott Kahn? This movie is like an Oprah special, only she's handing out celebrity instead of cars. You get to be famous after this, and you get to be famous after this, and you get... I'm standing by line at the Lock Raven Reservoir right now, where police and fire officials are in the process of removing a classic Mercedes owned by Republican Congress Oh, don't f***ing act like you didn't see the cops in the media circus at the reservoir when you went to pick up your geese tape. There's no f***ing way you didn't know what was going on. Zoom and enhance cliche. I've got the Phil Hammersley murder on videotape. Phil Hammersley died of a heart attack. Good God, man. Why have you already accepted the heart attack story? Nobody said that definitively yet. And why would someone call you out of the blue to say they have a murder on tape if it wasn't exactly f***ing that? Christmas movie. So you want some lingerie for your wife? Movie has time for this. This guy has a ton of plants in his apartment but refuses to let in maximum sunlight by having the shades pulled down. And is this the most conspicuous wheelchair in movie history? Holy hell, what is this playing while Daniel copies the accidental snuff film? First off, why would you load your gun just now when you're in the stairway? Second off, why would you go through the subterfuge of using this woman to knock on the door? Why wouldn't you just knock on the door yourself or just kick the door down and blow Banky away? I mean, thank God this guy's apartment has a second door that has a view of the front door and the stairs because otherwise, oopsie doopsie, he's dead. We're following Jason Lee running from government assassins, but still, god damn, dude, how did you set that turkey on fire? Your Michelin star is revoked. You cannot just move a satellite over Earth wherever you want like Pac-Man. It takes several calibrated movements over time to even slightly shift a satellite's orbit. 
entering a barbershop. He said that before dude entered the barbershop. Good God, every way these bad guys go, they run into a problem. It's like the shit they did to Jim Carrey in the Truman Show to make sure he didn't leave Sea Haven. You're telling me that Robert not only knows who Daniel is, but that Daniel's escape somehow led him into this lingerie store where Robert is shopping for his wife? Might as well go ahead and show Gene Hackman at the register buying strawberry scented lube if you're setting up conveniences. Also, this asshole just whips out a business card to somebody who is obviously in distress. Not because he needs to brag to his old college buddy that he's a hotshot lawyer now, but so that the bad guys can have any leads whatsoever once they find out Daniel doesn't have the video on him. The f was he thinking? He's going downhill, significant lead on his pursuers, and he crosses into oncoming traffic? <laughs> this movie never thought people would one day slow it down to this kind of degree and notice the hilarious rubber dummy here. But we gotcha, movie. The loss of friends was worth it. Are those my Christmas present? Christmas movie. This kitchen has fresh produce every seven inches of countertop space. Got hit by a fire engine pretty much in front of my eye. You exaggerating bastard. You didn't even see the impact. You gotta love the NSA spending tax dollars on Christmas decorations for their murder base. Also, Christmas movie! Who is that? Several indiscriminates in one primary. Who? Robert Dean. He's a DC labor lawyer. You assholes started tracking Daniel as soon as you found out he took a tape from a camera that was set up to maybe record geese. You tapped his phone. Why would you think Robert is a primary contact? Wouldn't you already know if you went to a lawyer about this? For what it's worth, I agree you have to ask Robert questions, but there's no way you think he's a promising lead yet. I hate doing this at Christmas. Christmas movie. Yeah, socials 986. Let me stop your investigation of Robert Clayton Dean for one second, Lauren Dean. 986 isn't a valid start to a social security number. It's the 555 of social security numbers. And there might as well be a Klondike in that number. Rotate us 75 degrees around the vertical, please. Oh, f you. Without extra cameras in the store, you ain't rotating sh if you can rotate an image with one camera, you might as well take that image, walk outside, and tour Washington, D.C. with it. All right. Now, just before the view's blocked, there's a shape change in Dean's bag. You already noticed that Daniel dropped something in Robert's bag. I know you want to make some statement about the overreaching intrusion of technology, but this wastes a lot of time. It's the back and to the left of this movie. They were already going to investigate Robert for even having contact with Daniel. These voice stress points indicate a really high degree of anxiety. An anxiety about what? The spilled wine on the important documents? The dog that won't stop yapping? The two cops asking him about a dead guy? His boner waiting for his wife to get home from dropping off their son at a sleepover? Oh, he's lying! Hey, when did Seth Green's partner change to Jamie Kennedy? Wasn't it Bodie Elfman a minute ago? Sure, it could be a different job with a different person, but I choose to be mad about it. Could we look at them? I don't think so, not without a warrant. These assholes have control of every little thing in government, and they somehow forgot to get a warrant when they decided to interrogate a lawyer. This guy's good. Why? Because he knows detectives are supposed to have a warrant? Even Lionel Hutz would know that. How did you find out Pintero was associating with union officials? I'm just that good. I hired an investigator. Carla knows that Robert regularly uses his ex-girlfriend Lisa Bonet for these kinds of investigations. It seems like the whole thing is brought up so that Carla can get jealous of Lisa Bonet. You see, movie, you had Regina King in 1998, and you didn't know what to do with her. Oh, hey, control, they are home. Wow, nothing like a warning. You have eight people inside the house planting bugs and breaking sh**, but you didn't put a guy or two a couple blocks away to give yourself some lead time on their return home? God, this NSA can see everything except a common sense strategy. Phone for phone. Yeah, but don't you need to clone his cell? Aren't you just straight up switching out the same model of phone without transferring any data? The only suit that they leave me is three years old. And I don't find it weird at all that they left me a suit, and in fact, I am wearing that single remaining suit right now without even questioning it. And they clean the sh** out of his house in the last 12 hours. Is this the same place that got ransacked just last night? We're gonna be following the subjects through the square. We're gonna have three listening stations and two video surveillance units with unidirectional mics. It'll be like that movie, The Conversation, which I assure you we're not ripping off at all. Even the emergency briefing room has a tree and several decorations that block the whiteboard. Christmas movie! Two, you gotta do better. So I know they wanted to have an homage to the conversation in this movie, but didn't they bug Robert's suit, his shoes, his watch, and everything they could get their hands on? Why did they need to set up this microphone and camera orgy? Wouldn't the bugs they've already set up record this conversation clearly? And if you're telling me they didn't put a bug in any of those things and they were all just trackers to follow wherever he goes, the next question becomes, why didn't they put an audio bug on those things. Using recognizable but not a household name actor Gabriel Byrne as the fake Brill is genius, and I'll give the movie a sin off for it. This dude in the background gives zero f**ks about the taxi that just made a crazy hard right turn. He saw a DC cab, he knows that f was a documentary, typical cab behavior. Brill brought a metal potato chip bag to block the cell signals. This must be where Terminator Dark Fate's Sarah Connor got the idea from. Also, why not just bring an empty chip bag? Why waste the time of dumping the chips on Will Smith unless it's cinematic? We had an arrangement! No contact! You broke the rules. I don't remember the movie ever explaining what those rules were. All we heard was Lisa Bonet talking about how she communicates with him whenever she needs help. Makes me wonder if Robert even knew what the rules were. 
Wasn't the ferry at 3 p.m.? And haven't all the clocks on the cameras been using military time? So how is it 7.54 a.m.? Even if they were using a 12-hour clock and it's still p.m., I don't see how five hours have gone by since Robert was on the ferry. The bad guys have been told what floor Robert is on. Why are they not running down this hallway right now? Instead, they take their sweet-ass time looking at their gadgets. And maybe this movie is making a point about how they rely on their technology over their common sense, but we all know it's so Robert can escape. I can't, I got rabies or something, I can't do it. What? Why is this movie wasting time with Scott Kahn's hand injury in this scene? Rabies? What the f*** is this scene? For a lawyer, this guy parkours his way down the outside of a hotel like he's goddamn Spider-Man. Christmas movie. I pay my respects to firefighters everywhere, but this is world record timing. The fire Robert set in that janitor's closet was already Drew Barrymore level before the sprinklers came on, and he's in an inferno by the time they show up. Maybe the passage of time is more like 15 to 20 minutes, but even so, I feel like Robert wouldn't survive this. Tell him to stop it now! Fire charge! The driver gets the command to pull over, so of course he stopped right in the middle of a busy intersection, which is the opposite of pulling over. This guy's wife told him to pull out once, and that's why they have a kid named Errol now. It was supposed to be Errol, but his father f***ed up the birth certificate too. I gotta be honest, him disappearing momentarily from the cops inside a roadway tunnel is probably supposed to be an homage to the fugitive, but it feels more like a ripoff. Look, he's even running down waterway pipes like Richard Kimball did. This is some bullshit. Robert miraculously pops out through the manhole cover at a time when absolutely no cars are coming, even though this movie has shown bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic everywhere he goes. And of course, once the bad guys try the same thing, it's nothing but cars everywhere. You guys have him. Talk to me, people. What happened to the guy who was monitoring all the tunnels a minute ago? I am 100% not surprised this guy has cock curtains. I told you they had this type of capability, and that goddamn privacy bill is... Was the earlier scene with them arguing about the privacy bill all just to set up this I told you so moment? Is the movie better because she told him so? They are not chasing me out of my house, uh-uh, Bobby. I picked those drapes! Nobody cares about the drapes. Will Smith would get jiggy with some cinema sins writing. You can't wear that. That's a Christmas present. Opening Christmas presents early. Also, Christmas movie. Also, also, the whole point of this unbelievable almost sex is so that Robert can find out that his nosy wife opened her Christmas present early, allowing him to connect the dots that his son now has the death tape that Jeff Beebe gave him. It's some incredible bullshit, but hey, movie's got a movie. Tell Maria we need her car. Chances are they win the bucket. And it's also a station wagon with room for me to lie down and back and hide from surveillance people. Thank God the nanny didn't drive a Yugo. It's not Eric's fault, Mr. Dean. It was always broken. The screen just scrambles when you turn it on. Yep, that sounds exactly like the Turbo Express to me. Also, these kids took the Turbo Express and tried to play it, but didn't notice that the card inside it didn't resemble a video game at all. Uh, and then even after the machine didn't work, they didn't put it back. Eric's buddy's been carrying it around in his goddamn bag for several days, for no reason other than to be ready when the plot demanded it. I'd also like to mention this console was discontinued in 1994, and it would hardly have been a machine they cared about. But maybe that's just an inconsequential nitpick that only I love. Breaking and entering is still breaking and entering even if you have good intentions. Man, the detective who does any kind of real work on this case is going to think this is the sloppiest murder scene they've ever witnessed if they believe that Robert killed Rachel and left his cufflinks neatly in the bathroom, not to mention his clothes with his initials on them. Colin Farrell in Minority Report would see right through this sh**. Plus, wouldn't the fact that the Dean home was ransacked a few days ago come up during this investigation? Get out of the car. I found a new cliche! Character says get out of the car when we all know the passenger will be allowed to either stay in the car or return to the car in short order cliche. Can we take a look at this guy who's helping him? Who is he? NSA's top cracks are only just now asking questions like this. Can you get a feature extraction and pattern matching on? Mm-mm. He never looks up. Oh, he never looks up, huh? That's why you can't see who he is? You're telling me that in the lingerie store you can rotate the video of one camera and possibly 75 degrees, but you can't do the same thing here? They even explain this by saying the camera is 155 miles above the Earth and it only looks down, as if they forgot the lingerie store's camera also pointed one way. Stay put, I need some food. I need to eat. And even though I'm paranoid about everything when it comes to you, I'm going to go into this store with all the cameras and shit in it. Could go to McDonald's, sure, but nobody makes hot dogs like this gas station. Pratt, can we see which way the car went? No, sir. This kid here at the register thinks that it might have went south. Unfortunately, the shot's too tight. I got make, uh, model, and color, but the plates are phony. Citation needed. The only footage we see is of Gene Hackman buying his food inside. This movie never shows us this angle on the outside, probably because it doesn't exist. And anyway, why would you point only one camera on the outside of the building with that narrow of a shot? All that said, who gives a shit about whether that camera could see where the car went if you're just going to consult the satellite later? This movie isn't hiding its love for the conversation. The backstory for Brill is specific enough that he could just be Harry Call under a different name. If there's anything you should know about watching this movie, it's to at least give the conversation a chance. He'd kill us if he got the chance! 
I'll go ahead and knock a sin off. Probably deserves it for something, and making people aware of that movie is good enough. He has a breach sensor, as we will see in a minute, and a burn everything to the ground button. He's that paranoid, but he doesn't have cameras or motion sensors outside the building to warn when people might be encroaching. Get the cat. Look, as a cat person who loves his cats, I would never tell Will Smith's character to get the cat. I would tell him to get the gun or get the fire extinguisher, all while telling him, while I get the cat. If you care about your cat, you don't leave the cat to the guy that you think is a sloppy loser. Using cats for guilt purposes. The disc gets burned because the movie wants Gene Hackman to do his master spy sh and get John Voight to confess to Jason Robard's murder, and I can't blame the movie for officially giving him a purpose. But God damn it, we have been through too much with the disc just to have it burned. A confession is cool and all, but it's nothing compared to the video evidence. Couldn't we have found a way to keep the disc and have Gene Hackman do some cool spy sh We got him, he's got nowhere to go. What do you mean nowhere to go? They have plenty of places to go as they soon prove right after this. Why would you ever say that? Christmas movie. This is my life. I worked hard for it. It's my life. It's now or never. When will you have some time to talk? Uh, about 30, 40 minutes. I'll be in suite 59 Lincoln Hotel. Damn, they tapped into this guy's phone at the perfect time. Tells his wife the room number and the hotel 40 minutes before he's going to be there. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. I'm just wondering what they would have done had he not said where he was going to be. This guy turned on five lamps in his hotel room plus a Christmas tree. Also, Christmas movie. This is definitely not Jeopardy, but how stupid do all these contestants have to be to have negative $8,000 and be this neck and neck with their horrible play? We're going in on Sunday. That's just great. Well, at least he's not cooking meth. I want the entire history of this device from birth to abortion. I understand what this guy is saying, but an abortion implies there was no birth. The word you're looking for is death, sir. But if this was somebody's unilateral Wet dream? <laughs> okay, kids. Unilateral wet dream is A, the name my doctor gave to my fire hose like nocturnal emissions, B, the name of my college Nirvana cover band, C, a spicy Albanian cola drink, or D, the nickname the Vils fans have for the Music City Miracle. Also, this is Bulldog from Frasier, and it's such a character departure that I simply cannot take this character in this movie seriously because I just know that once he leaves the room, Roz is going to reject him and dunk on him again. I love the idea that this basic video camera has a zoom that incredible. So Pratt scans for a wire and doesn't find one, but they're still way too trusting about this guy. He could have stuck a microphone literally anywhere around here, and you'd think, since they know Robert is working with him, that the possibility of turning on the wire after he scanned for it would be something they'd look for. Does he take this long doing everything? Cat or dog in a movie is asked a question by a human and meows or barks in response cliche. Get out and follow procedure. So now they don't even get the confession, at least right away. And here's where the movie seems to be battling the two egos of Gene Hackman and Will Smith at the same time. We gotta make Gene Hackman important. Yes, but after we do that, let's strip away all his importance and make Will Smith the hero. Cool. Let's set up a really stupid climax where Will Smith brings Tom Sizemore back into the picture and all the bad guys kill each other while he crouches under the table. Yes! This is exactly what this movie about the dangers of uncontrolled government surveillance needs. A big f dumb shootout. Planners cheese curls. Don't leave for work in your highly sophisticated satellite surveillance van without them. None. Does everybody here know that you killed Bill Hammersley and Rachel Banks? Why is Jack Black's character suddenly good? This is a weird flip-flop with no real setup. Where is it? Washington and Fourth. Oh yeah, and there's no need to check out who owns the business at Washington and Fourth. Just some gangster dude. Probably no reason to do any research or take any precautions. They go inside the restaurant so Robert can get the NSA guys and the mob guys to shoot each other by merely mentioning the tape, and none of the tape's contents ever coming up in conversation, and it works. We'll see in a minute. Watch out for the FBI. The idea that neither one of the two bad guy agents in the van three feet behind them heard this is some stupid ass motherfucking bullshit. So Vril fakes a cough so that he can get out of the vehicle and stare at the FBI, but how the f does he know what direction to look? Answer, he f doesn't, man. This is the absolute chillest cat in the history of cats to have gone through the last 24 hours of the explosion, chase, being in a bowling ball bag, your owner leaving you with a stranger, now you're loose in a government spy van, your owner's hand is bleeding. This cat not only wigged the f out ages ago, he pieced the f out ages ago. Cats don't like stress, screenwriters. I bought it. You sold it to him? This exchange alone should have blown up Robert's plan and had both bad guys asking if they were talking about the same tape. Good God, man, Tony Scott fell in love with the multiple guys pointing guns at each other thing from True Romance. It even contains a Tom Sizemore with Scott Conn playing Chris Penn. Hey, thank God your plan worked to perfection, Robert. All the bad guys are killing each other right now, and you're safe under a table guarded by a tablecloth, just like you expected. Also, while we won't show the violence, everybody in this small restaurant is shooting at each other right now. Apparently nobody dies for a long time, because everybody is able to shoot about 67 times before it's all over. We think it'd be over at Reservoir Dog Speed, but it lasts about the length of the House of Blue Leaves scene in Kill Bill, and they use swords. <gasps> Not too stupid after all. Just because you survived doesn't mean it wasn't stupid. Christmas movie. 
He sees himself on the TV from directly in front of him. Looks up at the smoke detector twice after that, like he thinks the camera is up there. And I think the movie thinks so too. And couldn't Brill just send him a note? Does Big Brother exist? Of course he does. Despite popular belief, we love movies, and we love talking about them. Check out the Sincast podcast, where I'm joined by my fellow Cinema Sins creators to talk about movies, rankings, rants, and more. Available here on YouTube, or search for Sincast wherever you stream podcasts. You took my sonar concept and applied it to every phone in the city. This is wrong. There's a cocktail party at the reservoir. I want to know about his wife. I want to know about his parents. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I like simple places, like... Butter in my ass, lollipops in my mouth. Every time I see one of those old guys, I, I always think the same thing. What do you think? I always think that he was once somebody's baby boy. Mr. Hunter, we have rules that are not open to interpretation, personal intuition, gut feelings, hairs on the back of your neck, little devils or angels sitting on your shoulder. El Camino. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. Go make yourself a drink and I'll be down in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Look, there's $140,000 here. I have no idea where it came from. When I input everything into the Quicken, nothing flashed red, so that's got to mean it's okay, right? This stinks! This is total BS! It was beauty killed the beast. 